basically go for it, but also know that like, you're probably going to need some backup um, just if things don't go exactly the way that you thought that they were going to right away. Everybody. I am Melissa Forzia of Take the Donut, here to help you get inspiration and get donuts. I'm a motivational keynote speaker, and today I'm bringing you a Take the Donut interview with Elizabeth Jamie, who is the owner of Comma, a Miami-based floral design studio. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's so good to talk with you. Well, before we get into any more serious questions, let me ask you this one to start with. What is your favorite donut? Um, I have a very specific favorite donut. It's the Tres Leche donut from Donut Plant in New York City. It's a cake donut. And I obviously don't have it now because I live in Miami, but I think about it often and it's just so delicious. <laughs> okay, we're all going to have to hunt that one down. <laughs> that yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I said a little bit about you up front, but tell us more about yourself. What should we know about you? Yeah, so um, I run Calma. I created Calma, which is a Miami-based floral design company. Um, we kind of spe specialize in colorful, sometimes tropical, modern flower arrangements. Um, most of our work is for branded events. So like a fashion company is having a lunch or a beauty company is having an influencer event. Um, we do do weddings, like maybe four, three or four times a year. Um, it's not our main thing, but we do do it when the fit is right. And then we also offer deliveries within Miami. So if you want to gift florals to someone, we do deliveries um, certain days of the week. Okay. And yeah, I started Calma after moving back to Miami from New York. Um, I had been working in the magazine industry in New York, and it was pretty random how it started. Um, but I kind of went for it. And then next thing you knew, I was a florist. <laughs> You sound like exactly the right person to talk to. I think we'll yeah. all find. Um, so let me reset this for people who don't know what these interviews are. So this is a take the donut interview. For me, take the donut is another way to say carpe diem. And it all comes from this very strange thing that happened to me in college where I left an actual donut on the table, but it became an object lesson for me and what it looks like when you leave an opportunity behind. So I don't want to do that anymore. I want to take the donut instead of leaving it on the table. And I'll leave a, a link of video here for those who haven't seen that full story. But basically, this conversation is all about what does it look like to go after opportunity in life, practically mm -hmm. speaking. So the first question I have on that for you is how are you with going after goals? What is that process like for you? Um. I think I get like fixated on a certain goal and I go for it. One thing I've realized is that I only set goals that I feel are like attainable. Like I would love to be an actress or like a film director, but I know that's just not going to probably happen for me. So that's like a goal that I, that I have in the back of my mind, but it's never going to happen. So I think when I have these goals that feel more attainable, I kind of just go for it. Um, and, you know, I will, I will try in my mind to kind of come up with a path to get there. Um, and for the most part, it's been pretty successful. I mean, sometimes the long-term goal is really clear to me and sometimes it's a little bit more muddy and I'm just like, okay, well, let's see where this takes me. Yeah. So it'll maybe have a bit more of a creative route to get there perhaps that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Yeah. So when you have a goal, that's going to be a bigger goal, something that's going to take more time or effort or skill building, whatever, is required. What keeps you motivated? Um, honestly, it sounds kind of cheesy, but like being one of the best, like I try, even if I'm not, at least I'm trying to be the best. Um, and that kind of keeps me motivated. And also just like, um, 
you know, sometimes this is a negative thing. Sometimes it's a positive thing, but I'm a people pleaser. So I, if there are people, like I remember in my old boss, like I wanted to ever, I wanted to do everything. I mean, sorry, in my old job, I wanted to do everything to please my boss. So that was my motivator. Cause I knew that she kind of was my goal to eventually move up the ladder there. Um, I would say that now the people that I'm trying to please are my customers. Um, you know, I want to make them happy and that, that motivates me. Mm. That certainly makes sense, especially when you're doing something that's so connected to a hospitality in- industry. Mm-hmm. For you, you know, whenever we're going for something that we want, challenges come up, obstacles come up along the way. For you, is there any particular brand of challenge that just seems to keep coming up no matter what it is you're working on? Like, is there an Achilles heel for you? Um, I think it kind of is tied to what I just said, the people pleasing part, how I said that there was also a negative side to that. Sometimes I don't know, like when to put myself first or when to put the business first. Um, and that manifests in ways like feeling burnt out and, you know, let's say there's a problem with a customer and I just, you know, it could be that the customer is pretty much in the wrong, but you know, that people pleasing side of me is like, I need to fix this, even though there might not be a fix. Um, so I feel like that's one of my weaknesses that I have been trying to work on really since I started the company. I'm curious for you, when you hit those moments of burnout that you just mentioned, what is your best way through it that you found for you? Um, I think it was a lot of kind of self-reflection to realize that, you know, I need to have moments of downtime in order to make space for the creative side and running a business. Um, So it's been about really mindfully setting aside time for myself. Um, Part of it has also been figuring out what it is that I do in my downtime because, you know, flowers was kind of a hobby and then it turned into a job. So this thing that was at one point, something that brought me like peace and joy, all of a sudden became this thing that, you know, decides how much money I make that month and how successful I am. Um, So really about finding what it is that I do in that downtime to make space for um, myself and to make space for work. What an interesting process to go through to sort of redefine what your hobbies are and you yeah. know <laughs> what that relaxing time looks like it's hard <laughs> yeah so if you look back on your life and you may have already said the answer to this but I don't know we'll see what is the biggest donut you've ever taken could be recent could be long past but the biggest thing you've gone after um I think probably it was leaving New York and moving back home to Miami. When I did that, I didn't know, I was leaving a really nice job. I worked at Bon Appetit as a photo editor there. um, And I decided to leave that and New York, which I had been living in for nine years. um, And when I got here to Miami, I was like, what am I gonna do with my time? And the first, I would say definitely the first like few months, but even the first year, I was really questioning whether I had made the right decision. I had talked about just going back to New York, Um, but eventually the risk and putting time into that, you know, new chapter paid off. Mm. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. I, I, you know, you were already starting to bring that into your bio and and it feels like that big opportunity is so integrated into your story now. Yeah. Is there a donut that you're trying to take right now? Something that's currently in progress for you? Um, I think it's kind of related to what we were just talking about, but I have, so I'm, I'm 34 and I feel like I have been working nonstop towards these goals since I moved to New York when I was 19. And I realized recently, like everything I do is for work or related to work and that I really wanted to take some time to just like take a step back, relax a little bit, focus on myself, focus on, um, just kind of living life and enjoying things outside of work. So in the past year, I've been mindful about making sure that I have time for that um, and really just like focusing on myself. Beautifully said. Uh, If we don't carve out time, who's going to do it? (laughs) You have to to say, no, today is a day off. (laughs) Yeah, nobody's doing that for you. That's for sure. (laughs) Um, You know, there may be people who are listening to this who have a donut of their own they want to take. 
It could be something that's still just an idea for them, or it could be something that they've actually started down the path, but they're not sure perhaps how to move forward or that they're not feeling inspired to move forward. So let's sprinkle some encouragement. And what would you say to those people who they have a donut they want to take? They just don't know where the next step of this is going to go. Yeah, I would say, you know, find an attainable first step um, and go for it. And I say go for it with a little caveat because I understand a lot of people say just go for it, but you're like, okay, well, I need to pay rent and stuff like that. Um, So kind of have like a backup situation or if it's something that's going to monetarily like take you a step back, make sure that you have another job to help finance this new endeavor that you're taking on. Um, when I started Calma, I had saved a lot of money from my previous job, um, and I lived with my family for like a good six months before I actually, you know, was making money in order to, you know, afford my own rent. So basically go for it, but also know that like you're probably going to need some backup um, just if things don't go exactly the way that you thought that they were going to right away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be all in, (laughs) you know, it could be that you have a little bit of a safety net or some security that, that supports you while you go after the thing. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who want to follow your journey, where can we find you? So on Instagram, um, the handle is calma underscore floral. And I have been focusing a lot on TikTok lately. So the handle is the same there. Um, TikTok is where I post all my very informational tutorial based videos. And Instagram is more about pretty pictures of flowers. So depending on what um, it is you're looking for, those are both there. I also just have, I also have a book that just came out. It's called Flowering and it's an instructional floral how-to book. Um, If you're really interested in taking up florals as a career or even just upping your floral game at home, the book is also an instructional how-to guide making cool, fun arrangements at home. Oh, that's wonderful. Everybody be sure to check out those resources. I'll put some links in the description so you can access those. And if you liked hearing Elizabeth's story, be sure to like and subscribe because there's so many inspirational interviews still to come. But Elizabeth, thank you so much for for joining us and spending a little time talking about going after goals and how that is for you day to day. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Okay, everybody, you know what to do. Get inspiration, get donuts. Bye, everybody.